Well, a charter school in Indianapolis says it's moving the needle for student academic performance based on a surprising stat uncovered by data, visits to the school nurse. Business of Health reporter Kylie Valletta has more. Kylie. Thank you very much, Gary. Paramount Schools of Excellence is a charter school with three campuses on the east side of Indianapolis. The vast majority of its students are from households at or below the poverty level. A few years ago, the school uncovered a data point that its leaders couldn't ignore. Students who visited the school nurse more frequently had lower academic performance. It's a stat that gave birth to a much deeper movement at the school called the Paramount Health Data Project. Here to tell us more is Tommy Reddix, Executive Director at Paramount Schools of Excellence, and Dr. Addie Angela, an independent researcher. Thank you both for coming to the show today. You're welcome. Thanks, thanks for having Tommy, us. Tommy, let's start uh, with you, this interesting connection that this project has uncovered between school nurse visits and academic performance. Yes, thanks. I think academically, really all around the state, our, our schools really care about taking care of the whole child. And what we're finding is that students are spending 1,400 hours or more in the academic context at school, and, and some of them 25, 2600 hours a year just at the school itself or after school or before school. But what we weren't doing is looking at the data that we were getting from those same students when they were going to the nurse. And when we took that data and correlated against academic achievement for our kids, we realized it was really telling a major story, something that would allow us to move proactively to help that child and help them get through what other health condition might be taking them down or making it hard for them to succeed academically. So for us, it's, it's a very meaningful process to say, that, that health is really a strong part of school readiness for a child. And if we pay early attention to that, we can be really impactful in their futures. And Dr. Angela, you've been uh, doing some research for this project about 10 years now. And you say one of the most important points of this project is that it really lets schools be proactive. Tell us about that. Yeah, schools are federally mandated to have what we call MTSS, or multiple tiers of systemic supports in place. And so every school has to have these things. And it's really a process in place where schools review data to see what's going on with a child so that we can intervene appropriately. When we started adding information or one piece of data around the social determinants of health from our nurse's office, we found that we were able to intervene much faster with kids. So we were able to be more proactive, more strategic, and more focused in the interventions that we're giving kids. And we were able to see a change in their academic performance based on our ability to intervene earlier. So interesting. And Tommy, um, you're wanting to take this project to other schools. Tell us about how you hope to expand it in the future. Sure. We really feel like if, if this is truly moving the needle for kids, that it isn't something that should be happening in a silo. Uh, if, if we are pay, paying attention to data and doing a good job with cross-sector data sharing between health and academics, this should be something that multiple schools or multiple regions, even the whole country, should be able to take advantage of. For that reason, we've spun this up into its own organization called the Paramount Health Data Project, and we're really wanting to pilot this in more areas around Indianapolis. Already we're serving a, a Pike Township school, we're serving a rural school in Mady Community Academy, we're serving our three Paramount schools, uh, which gives us a really large statistical workforce to look at and study and prove that this research is very, very significant and that if schools can interact on behalf of the child with their health data in mind, that, that we could really make great change and we can really apply some, some like we said earlier, needle-moving supports for children as they move forward in life and through their educational careers. And, and Dr. Angela, you said you talk to a lot of people and they hear about this and they get afraid of all the policy involved and intimidated, and it just sounds too complex, but you say it's not. <laughs> right, absolutely. I mean, a lot of people forget that the Department of Education and the Department of Health and Human Services came out of the Department of War right after the Depression. Um, we knew that our population had to be um, literate and strong and smart and all of those kind of things. And so where education has historically been private or public and healthcare has always been private, you also have all these policies, HIPAA, FERPA, IDEA, all of these things. And so what we've been able to do is do a crosswalk across those two policies to make sure that we're adhering to both sets of policies. We're following the confidentiality, all of the data mining things, everything that you would need to do to adhere to both. Um, we have families sign off on waivers and we, we have all of those pieces in place. And we work with the Rooney Foundation. They're a fantastic nonprofit that works for schools around data. They've been great at helping us de-identify everything and make sure that we're, we're really getting at those pieces so that we're working with the policy instead of against it. And Tommy, just a few seconds left, but as a closing remark, tell us 
how important uh, is the school nurse? It's, it's different than what we thought it was. I think we, we radically undervalue nursing in our schools, and it can impact a child, what we're seeing statistically, up to 10% academically through their calendar year, especially our students at risk who are at a 10% higher risk than their peers when they're having health issues. And so that nurse, like we would see a school counselor or a dean, should have equal weight in that academic process for the child and can really play a part in the whole school culture. All right, well, Tommy, Dr. Angela, thank you both, and good luck as you expand the program. Thank you. Gary, back to you.